welcome everyone to this episode of Unraveling the Veil with your host, Yara Rose, from the YaraRose.com website. That's Y-A-R-A-R-O-S-E dot com. Hello, welcome. I'm so excited to do this different uh, podcast episode today. I don't know if I've ever said this or not yet, but I love listening to paranormal podcasts. I love hearing other people's true stories of the paranormal that they have encountered and how that's influenced their lives. The one thing I'm not a fan of is how the podcasts that I'm listening to have both negative and positive experiences in it, and some of them can be pretty dark. So when I start an episode, I never quite know what all the stories are going to be in it, and it can influence me in a negative way. So I have to be careful on when I listen to these episodes because I've done it before where I've listened to it too late at night and then I heard three knocks in the middle of the night and was terrified that there was a demon in my house. It wasn't a demon, it was my grandpa and he was picking on me because of what I was doing and he was trying to get my attention to the fact that Listening to those things late at night is not a good idea, and that was why, because my mind was automatically thinking about the dark side. And I wanted to create like a podcast within a podcast where certain episodes I talk to real people about their spiritual encounters with loved ones or guides or source, and how those encounters have helped them in their life in a positive way. I want all the stories to be positive, uplifting, and meaningful. And when you want to have a place to go to hear those heartwarming stories, there it is. And you don't have to worry about it lowering your vibration because they should all be good, positive, uplifting stories. So... I'm going to try it. I guess if no one likes it, then no one likes it. But I think it'll be fun, and I'm excited to do that. So here we go. Today I am so blessed that my dad is willing to come on my podcast and tell us all about some of his experiences with spiritual signs and things that have happened in his life. And I know it's out of his comfort zone and not something he necessarily would have done normally, but he's here to support me. And I think he has some of the most amazing and profound stories. So I'm hoping that this helps some of you out there that maybe need validation that signs and these things from beyond exist and that miracles can happen because he has some wonderful stories that just one of them would be amazing in themselves. And he's got several where his life has been saved or the lives of his family have been saved because of these signs. And then there's other ones that are just signs of encouragement, things that happen to keep him going and and to show him that they're around and they're supporting him. They all add value to his life. They all show him that he's never alone. We are all surrounded with signs and we all can receive them. It's just whether we are aware of them. So today, I'm so pleased to announce that my father is here to speak about some of his experiences. So I was just saying that it's possible to receive messages from multiple different spirits. It could be, and it could even be your higher self. Your entire soul cannot fit into a human body. So part of your soul is in there, but part of it is also outside of your physical body. Because if it were try, if you had to put your whole soul in your physical body, it would explode. It can't contain your whole soul. So it could even be your higher self giving you a sign sometimes. My point is like, it could be multiple different places that you're getting these signs, but you're getting them, you're understanding them, you're recognizing them, and they have significance to you. So I know there's yeah. a couple stories that you have that you've received different messages that have played a huge role in your life. Could you share some of those? Are you talking like dreams also that I feel are signs? Whatever you'd want to share. 
So because I don't have anyone willing to write in it right now, I'm hoping that my family are willing to share their stories because I know that you have a lot of stories. We have a memory garden from all our loved ones that we got up in our yard. And it'd be for my wife, both of her parents. My oldest brother got killed in Vietnam, and he's in there. He got pictures of his soldier uniform. And then my dad and mom both are in there, too. We just put pictures up to remind us, and then she, my wife does a good job of planting flowers in there. So anyway, one day something was coming into my head. There's a reason them eagles are in that ditch. I don't see no dead animal. Usually it's dead animals where the eagles are at. There was no sign of a dead animal. So then I, in my mind, I said, well, I'm going to walk down there and figure out what they were after there, and there's where I found my brother Don. Bitch, mm. I got killed in the war. Yeah. So then I figured, well, that must there was three of them, and I'd lost my mom and my dad and my brother. And I figured that was them giving me the sign that I needed to pick up his picture, put it back up in the memory card. Oh, okay. But that's what the deal was there. I mean, okay, it was like, so it wasn't like it was. It didn't have any other meaning other than the fact that your picture got lost, and they were showing you where it was. That's funny. No, I didn't know the picture was lost. Not until I walked down there, but it was sign. It was a sign. It was a sign. That's funny. <laughs> it was telling me in my head that there's a reason that them eagles are there, and my inquisitiveness is the reason probably that I went down there to look. See right. Why. You felt the intuitive nudge that there was something more to it than just eagles flying around right there. Well, they were there more than once, of course. I mean, they were there. More, I seen them a couple of times there. Okay. And it didn't make sense why they were swirling there. There was nothing for them to be there. Why they would? I still don't know why else they would be right by that picture. You know. Right. Why would they be by that picture unless it's a sign from up above spirit? Right. Yeah, you're right. I don't. There really isn't any other explainable reason. There's no reason then them birds should have been landing there. The only time I've ever seen eagles right by the road is if there's been a dead animal. And when I drove by there with a the semi, there is no dead animal that I could see out there where they were at. So then on a Sunday, I decided I'd check it out and walk down there and see what the heck was so interesting for them three bald eagles and that there catches my eye anyway because i've lost three of my family members so then mm -hmm. when you, and three is a good number of angels you know three yeah. spirit angels so then i walked out there and i said oh wow this is something you know my brother's picture mm -hmm. or or picture so i thought well Thanks, Mom, Dad, and Donnie for letting me know it was missing. Right. There you go. Then you got to reunite it in your memory garden. Yep, I did. I found it. Yeah. And then the day of my mom's funeral, though, I did, when I was coming home from the funeral, I seen three eagles flying way high. And when I got around the trees, I wanted to take a picture and they were flying away. And by the time I got around the trees, they were gone as fast as I see them. They just disappeared. I thought that was a sign from God, too. I, I follow a lot of signs of the eagles, actually. And what do you think the eagle, why do you think that's significant to you and your family? Like, why do you think that they use that as the sign to communicate with you? Well, my mother, actually, when she was dying, said that you better look in the sky and see me. I'm going to be a eagle okay that's cool to have that correlation she did say that so do you have any other yeah. times that you know you can recall of when you've seen eagles when you just knew it was her then well i just had one this week actually i was just having kind of a dull day and i listened to the a positive thing on the radio about god and keeping the faith and staying positive and I was loading my truck, 
I just got done with the tape or whatever it was. I got out of the truck and looked in the sky, and there was a bald eagle flying straight away from me towards the back. And I thought, well, that's cool. That's mm -hmm. that I was on the right track. That's very cool. I love those synchronicities when it just lines up like that. Seems like it's quite awesome. I mean, I yeah, I think the more you open up, the more that you recognize them when they happen. My spirit guides had me listening to that song that I shared with you about Jesus is dying on the tree and freeing everyone. And I was listening to that on the way to Rochester one day when I was still trying to figure out what the message was that they wanted me to share with everyone. And as soon as it ended, a bald eagle came flying like right by my car. It was so cool. We live in the United States of America. The bald eagle is the representation of freedom. And I had just listened to a whole song about freedom. Yeah. Crazy how well, that's that... a sign. You got to follow your spirit sign. Mm -hmm. That keeps you going. I mean, if you have a bad day, a lot of times something happens where it cheers you up. If you have faith, yeah, period, and they get you through a rough point in life. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, I still do still think that that. I was really having a tough time that one year that that one guy was making up stories about me on that land, on that farm, and then it seemed hopeless. <laughs> what can I do? I didn't do nothing wrong, and I'm getting picked on, and I was distressed, and I was driving the tractor through the field, and I said, God, please give me some kind of a sign that everything is going to work out for us. You know, it was not good farming. It was poor prices. And feeling hopeless. So when I got the truck full, I drove it home. And then I looked behind the truck, and here's this white dove right down where I got to go down to dump the truck. And then I got down there, and he didn't go away. And then I unloaded the truck, and he stayed there for every day for three days. It was definitely something because to me, Three days ties in with biblical things, you know, three days. Mm -hmm. That's the way I relate it to it. Well, my daughter came home, she seen it, and Joel, my son, seen it too. And the weird thing is, is it seemed like that doves, the dogs didn't pick on it. That's what was just totally different. I mean, wouldn't you think the dogs would chase it away? But it stayed there for three days and helped us farm. And then on the third day, we told my daughter, Amy, about it. She went and looked at it, and she said it flew in a circle, and then it took off. I felt like that was my sign, that the dove was telling me everything was going to work out. So then three days after that, then we got a phone call with an opportunity to pick up another farm, which to me was the sign that everything is going to be all right and it'll be better. And then we proceeded on the farm deal and then we ended up picking it up. But we got the phone call three days after the dog left. So that made me feel very good and felt like the spirits was helping me to be positive and well, everything would work out that year. So I do believe that you do got to follow your signs because God gives you signs or your spirits through spirit or whatever. You know, you get signs in life. You always do. You, get you do. I agree. A lot of times you get them through dreams. Right before you wake up, you'll get that dream. And then you'll remember it. I personally think that it depends on the person. I mean, I think that anyone can get anything, right? But it seems to me like certain people are more receptive to certain things. So, like, some people may get more dreams and other people may get more synchronicities or more of something else in their real life, not when they're sleeping. But I think there's certain sensitivities and it just depends on your level and where you're at. But I know that you're you're pretty sensitive across the board. So I, it seems to me like you get a lot of signs everywhere in your dreams, in your waking life. And you're also an empath like me. So you also absorb emotions and energies from other people without even necessarily realizing it. And that 
gives you more information too. Yeah, I do feel I read people pretty well. I mean, yeah. I'm gifted that way. Mm-hmm. But I do think some of that may have come from when I was young and I got in that bad accident. Because when I did that that day, I remember nothing other than the fact that I was able to see the clock on the wall as the doctor was sewing up my lips. And there's no way I could actually see that if I was really in body, I don't think. So I really do believe I was maybe out of body a little bit that night. So the listeners might not know what accident you're talking about. Do you want to just give like a brief overview of what happened? And then, yeah, it does sound like you had an out-of-body experience. Well, when I was, I was too young to drive, but I'm a farmer. So I guess when you're a farmer, you start young. And we stayed home from school two days because the fields were so wet that year. It was in November, I know that, because it was around my birthday. Anyway, I got to stay home and farm because the ground finally got cold enough that it froze up and it would carry the combines over the field. When it's cold outside, you get tired. So my brother Rick was in the van and me, and we both fell asleep. When Dad got done combining that night, he came and got Rick woke up and he went to drive the truck and he told me to drive the van up but I think I was sleeping yet so I actually got up jumped into the van seat and I took off going 40 miles or daddy cornered across the field which wasn't supposed to be the driveway it was in a regular dug field and so I drove through the one ditch I jumped it and hit the top of it then I did a nose dive onto the other side of the ditch. Then it gave me bad whiplash, and I was within a foot and a half of a power pole, so I was really blessed to be alive. But I don't remember nothing. Dad said that I had been laying on the floor of the van, and I had ripped all my sinuses loose under my mouth, and my lips were big and my bleeding all over. And then they took me to the doctor and then they took me to the hospital. The first thing I can remember is seeing like quarter to 12 and I could see it clearly, but at the same time, I could feel the doctor stitching in my mouth. So how could I see that? I don't but where was the clock at? Was it like on a wall in an area where you couldn't have been able to see? Yeah. You know, you're in an operator. I don't think I could have seen it. No. Because I remember my head being back. It wouldn't have been on the ceiling, you know. Mm -hmm. That, I do believe, is maybe why I get gifted on certain things. Because they always say somebody that's had had them type of things seem to be able to be in touch more. Yeah, it seems to me, I've I've read a lot, and I've heard a lot of, like, when you've had near-death experiences like that and when you actually leave your body, it it seems like it thins the veil. So then when you come back, your veil is just, it's been thinned, so you're more receptive and you receive those messages easier. Yeah, I really do believe that's why I'm more, I mean, I am gifted at at least picking up on it, maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, I think everybody gets signs, but some people aren't aware a key on them. You got to look. I look. I'm always looking for signs of something. You got to be looking for the signs to come to you. Yeah. Well, and you have to be open to receiving them. So if you're closed minded and you don't believe that there's any possible way, then if even if they could try to send you a whole horde of signs, I believe that your energy can be strong enough that you'll block everything out. So the fact that you're asking and you're open and you're receptive means that you're going to see more and you're going to be able to receive more in because you're attracting more. You're not, I shouldn't even say you're attracting more. You're just not putting obstacles up to keep them out. Yeah, that's for sure. But that is what I think. I mean, there's a lot of them signs that people, they just got to look. I mean, you got to be open to signs too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't just say, well, you go fly around and get dead things all the time, you know. I mean, sure they do, but still, they're a symbol, you know. Yeah. I've walked out of my house some days, and I've seen an eagle, you know. They're so 
cool because they don't even wag their wings and they're just floating in the sky. Mm -hmm. To me, eagles are a positive sign that spirit's guiding you in the right direction. Yeah. That's what I feel. Very cool. I do. Many signs from dreams, too. I'm blessed. Yeah, so do you want to share that one where your dad came to you in a dream? I think we're all getting headaches in the daytime. So then I had this dream that night, and my dad was in the dream. And it was like we were in the basement. He didn't talk. They don't. I don't get many people to talk to me in my dreams. And they they just put their hands up. He was showing me this pipe I had to look at. So I didn't know what he meant. He didn't tell me nothing. He just was insinuating I should look at the pipes in the basement. So then the next day, then I went down the basement. Oh, my dad wants me to look at the pipe. So then when I went down the basement to look at the pipes, here the one pipe with the exhaust of the furnace had broke. So there was a gap, like an inch or so a gap on the exhaust pipe. So actually the exhaust was probably coming into the house. Yeah, probably, for sure. Probably, that's why we were getting headaches. So then I fixed it right away. But that was definitely a sign. Yeah, and the headaches, I believe, stopped after that, too, right? Well, yeah, they did. Well, we were definitely getting carbon monoxide. It was weird. I guess that was probably before we had the carbon monoxide things, you know. Mm -hmm. That was long enough ago that I don't think we had the CO detectors at that time in our house. But I think we got them after that. Right. That That was kind of a scary deal. Give you the yeah. Anyway. yeah, for sure. That is. And it's so cool that you were able to receive that message and know exactly what to do with it. Yeah, I knew that one, but there is messages I've gotten from other people and stuff that I haven't been able to figure out what they wanted me to see. And I've made mistakes and didn't see the mistakes of what they wanted me to do. I mean, this farm I bought, the one guy I bought it from came to me in my dreams, and he wanted me to look high in the barn. I kept, I looked high. The one day I seen a raccoon when I was doing chores, and I thought, well, that can't be what he wanted me to see, but I really don't know what he wanted me to see. And I never did figure it out. We had a storm then. Like a couple years later, and then I see he wanted me to see the top of the hay mow inside one of the hooks that held the door had to broke, and that was what I was supposed to see, but I didn't see it. Well, then the barn door broke, so I don't always get get it narrowed down exactly like I'm supposed to. But he tried to give me the sign. But I've never seen him since, so I don't know if he got mad at me or what. But I didn't catch that one. I mean, I'm sure he didn't get mad at you, Dad. <laughs> well, I didn't figure <laughs> out what he was trying to show me. But I knew it was him in the dream. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure he was just trying to warn you because it was his farm and he cared for it and he was trying to give you a heads up. Yeah. If it was a life or death one, I'm sure he would have came back, you know, and kept kept giving you the same thing or gave you a different vantage point so you could have figured it out. But it wasn't, like, imperative, you know what I mean, like the other one was. I do know he really loved this farm. I mean, he really did love his farm here. So I was trying to do what he wanted me. I just couldn't figure out what he was trying to show me in the dream. I always did look up and think about it. Every time I went in to do chores, I looked up in the air to try to figure out what he wanted me to see, but I could not figure it out. But I'm just saying you don't always figure out everything, and I guess it just meant to be. I don't know. That's life, I guess. Yeah. You just do the best you can with what you get. Yep.
did you get besides the besides your three family members flying after or the day of your mom's funeral? Was there anything else right after her passing that sticks out with you or your dad? I don't remember for sure. Nothing. Right in that period. The only other thing was is the day we had the accident with Amy, but I don't know what that was, if that was spirits or my oldest brother that got killed in the war. That was when all the kids, <laughs> you kids were home. We were trying to get lined up to get some corn out of the bin, and it was the first year we lived on this farm. And it was muddy, and I had hauled in a couple loads of great big three-inch rock on the back side. But then the auger was, it was so muddy up front where we were trying to put the auger in that I had to have my wife and Christy try to hold the front of the auger. And I was trying to push it with the loader, with the tractor. When I was going to back up to get on the other side, something in my head told me to stop, stop. And then I stopped. And normally I wouldn't shut the tractor off, but something was telling me really strongly I needed to stop, shut the tractor off. And here my two-year-old daughter had got out behind me without me seeing her, and she was face down, and the tractor was on top of her, going toward her head. You know, we were up to her shoulder blades with the tractor. Mm. It probably weighed about 15,000, 16,000 pounds with fluid in it also, so it was heavier than a normal, just light tractor. And then she was screaming, and my wife quick run over and said, Steve, you're on Amy. So then all I could do is, I guess I did it out of reaction. I just quick started up and drove ahead quick. And then she come and picked her up, which I suppose you're not supposed to do, but she carried her into the house quick. Mm Mm-hmm. And then she called my sister, hysterical, and they got the ambulance out there into the driveway, and then we went up to the hospital, and we were in that little room praying, both of us. The doctors came in and told us, well, we don't know if she's going to ever walk again, which wasn't what we wanted to hear. Right. So all we could do is stay in there and pray. And then, then the next time they come in and says to my wife, I need you to come in. I think her legs are working now. She's kicking around, you know, she's kicking. So then she went in there, and then it was like, if you ever have something like that, it seems like they keep coming, and with, this is what you got to be concerned about. This, They give you about five things you got to just keep worrying about for a while there. They thought her pelvic was crushed, and she had, they thought maybe her spleen was smashed or whatever. I think with prayer, it's really a miracle that she was there. Yeah, especially, I don't remember if you said it this or not, but I recall you guys had just put fresh rock down, too. Yeah, there was a foot of big rock there. Big, like bigger rock. chunks of rock, too. So it's not it like... solid. They, yeah. It was the spring of the year, and the doctors all said it was soft soil that saved her life, but it was hard right there. It wasn't soft where she was at. It was soft. Right. There was there soft. was no soft soil, but they oh. they didn't know how to tell you that a miracle had just happened, right? Because doctors don't typically say that. No, they don't. It was a miracle. I always say that it's a miracle that she's around. She's my miracle girl. I mean, she had lug marks all the way up to her shoulder blades. That's how much of that tractor was on top of her. Yeah, that that much weight on a two-year-old. That's crazy. On top of really big Brock. So it wasn't like she had any give. And then about the year to the date, of when that accident happened, and she don't remember this either for some reason. She don't ever remember telling Dorothy that, but she told Dorothy that, Mom, it was Jesus that held that tractor up. She remembered Jesus was the one that helped her. So, oh, that's so cool. That's, I just got goosebumps. That's what she told her. But then now, when she got older, she don't remember saying that, but she did. We both 
remember her saying that. She did, and what gives you the chills every time you ever hear about it, because when you see a two-year-old get backed up over with vehicles, there ain't too many of them that ever survive. Seemed like there was one from another local town around that same year, and it was a grandpa that backed over his grandkid and something, and then they died. And every time you would hear that for years, you would always think about what you went through when you backed mm-hmm. over your daughter or your it would be terrible to live with. Yeah. I mean, it was bad enough to... I still walk by that spot and think about that day. You know, I mean, it's just something that you were blessed to have the miracle that she... something saved you. And I still think it was my big brother's spirit that stopped me. Something. I really do. And it could, it could have been. I just got goosebumps again, so I feel like that's confirmation. I do think it was him. He was watching out for us down here. And, and you know he does that, because he's done it for you multiple times since then. Yes, he has. He has. He has. I think, was, if I recall, he was he was at your oldest daughter's accident that she had not, like, a couple of years ago, and I thought... I thought he was at the other one when when that truck got rolled. I think was that in Iowa. I can't remember. Yeah. I know he's been watching out over all of our family. I believe. Yeah. Oh no, I have no doubt that he watches out over everybody. I'm sure. I'm sure, he's keeping all of his siblings safe and their families if he can. When you think about it, he was only 19, and he enlisted in the the Marines because he wanted to go fight fight the war over on the uh, other lands instead of on our own land to protect his family. Mm -hmm. So if he went over and then he fought the war to save his family, he's going to do that when he gets killed over there, goes straight to heaven. Yeah. It really makes sense that he would still follow up the same thing he's doing that he was doing down here when he was down working to save us all to, you know, protect us from our... Yeah, for sure. I guess that's probably why our family seems kind of close and tight, you know, is because we had a big the oldest of the family watching out for us all these years. Yeah, I feel like as many people as you've had in your family, because you have a lot of, a lot of family members... We've we've been very fortunate and very lucky with all of the accidents and things that have happened to us and how we've managed to get through. Yep. Yeah, there's a reason. I think I think it's it's got to be some protection from above from through all of our loved ones. Our Donnie is really a big part in helping us out. Yeah. And I've yep. seen him in my dreams. I've actually seen him through what our country's going through right now. It's all going to work out. It's all. I really still believe it's going to work out for us all. Yep, I agree. Things are going to work out. God's going to take care of us. No. Mm-hmm. Good will win over the evil. That's what I, I agree. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. He has so many wonderful stories. We could do hours and hours and hours upon all of his experiences. But... I'm just so grateful that he was willing to share those with us today. I hope that they were beneficial and helpful to you. I know we left a couple in there that weren't what some people might consider life-altering or life-changing, but I think they're important because they go to show that once you open up and once you establish this relationship with the spirit world, they will give you signs of love and support, and they will also just that... Maybe you never would have known otherwise. Like that picture one. I think that's awesome that he's missing this picture of his brother that he didn't even realize. And here these flying eagles tipped him off to the fact that something was up. And he followed his intuition. And he followed that feeling to investigate. And he found out that his brother's picture was missing from his memory garden. 
And it's stuff like that that's so cool because they have that relationship. They have that trust in each other and in their signs and their ability to communicate that they are able to communicate things like that. And it also gives my dad more confidence in his, his intuition and following his beliefs, which then in turn helps him to believe in and honor those bigger signs that he gets and those bigger warnings that he gets. So what may seem insignificant to some is actually building upon that layer of trust and faith in each other. And it is all important. And sometimes they're just fun to talk about. I love all of these stories and I really hope that you guys did too. Thank you so much for listening. With all of my love, Yara Rose. 